it's Ella and I here today and welcome back to my channel for chapter 9 of Sweetbriars Leaving the City. I'm really excited to get cracking with this story but before that don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you know when chapter 10 is going to be uploaded. And if you have any questions, comments or reviews feel free to put it in the comments below or message me on my social medias which will be linked in the description box um, and it's also Alana Clark a question on Instagram and Facebook. And the ace underscore question on Twitter. I don't know why Ella's licking my hand. <laughs> and so without further ado, let's start reading. Sweetbriars, Leaving the City, Chapter 9 Kate and Dodette were halted under the tree, watching Tabby ride Nancy at Pony Club. As usual, Benji was praising them, shouting, Excellent! as they effortlessly followed his orders. Kate had ridden before Tabby. Today, Benji had barked orders at them and told her she needed to be less wishy-washy with her aids. He'd even snapped at her, saying, Forward, Kate! Please use those legs! Kate had to admit that Odette felt better when she had more impulsion, but she wasn't used to being talked to this way, especially in front of the other riders. It was obvious Benji didn't like her. Violet had her assessment and was placed in a pony club group. She was in a lower level group that did a mixture of flat work and jumping. Her reaction to this surprised Kate. She'd realised Violet wasn't as gifted a rider as Tabby, but she'd thought that someone as confident as Violet would want to be in a higher group. But Violet said the lower group suited her just fine, and she wanted to have fun and not take it so seriously, especially during her first year at Pony Club. When they met at lunch, she gushed about how much fun she'd had in the morning, doing trot poles in one session and cross-country schooling in the next. Spot was a star! While they ate, they watched Benji riding a horse in the lower arena. That's Benji's young horse, Samson, said Tabby. He brought Samson to Pony Club to school him in a new environment and let him see new things. Samson was a shiny liver chestnut with a perfect white star on his face. His trot and canter looked flamboyant, which Benji called expression, and he looked balanced for a young horse. They watched from a distance, mesmerised at what they saw. Benji rode like the equestrian stars Kate admired, and he and Samson were a picture of harmony. That evening, Kate was studying the wall in her bedroom. The photos of Kate with Odette and the posters of her equestrian stars didn't look right. She'd organised and reorganised them at least ten times since moving to Sweetbriars. Now Kate sat on the bed feeling discouraged, and Pip climbed into her lap, butting his head against Kate ha Kate's hand for pats. "'What a nice life you have, just eating and sleeping.' Kate said to Pip, laughing as she ran her fingers through his soft grey fur. He looked at her with a who me face, and his eyes began to close as he dozed off. Kate leant her head back against the wall, thinking, Should the photos go on one wall and the posters on another? The problem was, they were different sizes and didn't look right with her rosettes squished in the middle. Kate was inclined to agree with her mum. She should narrow down her favourite photos and put them in frames on top of her drawers, and keep the posters on the wall. Another option was to move her rosettes to the stable tea room where her mum and Alex's rosettes were, but Kate found it quite motivating to wake up in the morning and see her rosettes before anything else. Kate realised she was focusing on the photos and posters to avoid thinking about the day she'd had at Pony Club. She was also disappointed as Beth had cancelled her visit that weekend with no real explanation. She said she could come up the following weekend, which coincided with the opening day. Kate had to admit it would probably be better for Beth to come during the opening day as she would get to see Sweetbriars at its best. The next day was a Sunday, and Kate had lots of things to do. Mum had asked her to ride the new ponies Quinn and Saffron, and Kate needed to do the chores, like prepare the horses' evening feeds. In the feed room, Kate was organising the feed buckets when Alex walked in, sat on a bale of hay, and clapped his hands for her attention. "'So, sis, are you ready to ride the new ponies today?' he said casually as he studied, studied Kate's face. "'Sure, they're as cute as pie. It should be fun,' Kate said in an upbeat voice as she continued to scoop chaff and pellets into the horse's feed buckets. "'How did you find Pony Club yesterday?' asked Alex nonchalantly. "'It was good.' replied Kate, keeping her eyes focused on what she was doing. Really? Alex said, and Kate looked up and met his gaze. Lately, Kate and Alex hadn't talked about anything meaningful. Alex was always busy and seemed to find his new life fun and easy. At least that's what Kate thought. Well, Kate said, sighing. She sat on another bale of hay opposite Alex and crossed her arms. 
It was okay. I'm just finding it a bit hard as Benji doesn't like me very much. Alex hesitated before responding. Why exactly do you think he doesn't like you? Because he seems frustrated with me and is always telling me to get Odette more forward before we can do any interesting exercises. Then we run out of time by the time she's going better. What exercises does he make you do to get her more forward? Transitions, transitions, transitions. Walk to trot, trot to canter and canter to trot. He also tells me to vary the trot, going from working trot to medium trot, across the diagonal or down the long side of the arena. Hmm, I can see how that would be repetitive. How does Odette feel afterwards? Better, actually, Kate admitted. I feel like I don't need to nag her with my leg all the time. So it's good then that Benji's making you ride like this, maybe? Alex asked with a boyish grin. I guess I'm just feeling frustrated. Everything feels hard now and I miss Bridget. Kate, do you think maybe you've been used to the same teacher telling you how good you are for quite some time, but you aren't achieving anything new or different? Without waiting for an answer, he continued earnestly. I was riding through the cross-country course yesterday and caught some of your lesson with Benji. Odette looked the best I'd ever seen her. Kate was happily surprised after her brother's compliment and grinned at him. Okay, thanks, Alex. I guess I'm just going to need some more time to get used to everything. Yep, exactly. That's it, Alex said encouragingly as he stood up and patted Kate's shoulder. Kate laughed as she watched her brother leave the feed room. After talking to Alex, Kate felt more optimistic and walked with a sense of purpose to the field to where Quinn and Saffron were grazing. They'd put the ponies together as their former owner said they were used to it. Kate thought she would start with Quinn, the bigger of the two. When she approached him in the field, he seemed to size her up with his clever-looking quarter-horse eyes following her every step. Saffron was a few metres off, grazing with one eye on Quinn and Kate. As Kate led Quinn away towards the gate, Saffron let out a high-pitched whinny and cantered frantically after them, catching up to his friend at the gate. Kate laughed, realising Saffron was worried about being left alone. It's okay, she soothed. However, Saffron was right up behind Quinn's tail. Kate couldn't get him to back off so she could lead Quinn out the field safely. Alex was watching what was happening from the stables and came over to help, holding Saffron back so Kate and Quinn could leave. Poor things, said Kate. Saffron is worried about his friend leaving. I guess these two have been friends for some time, remarked Alex as he patted Saffron reassuringly and gave him a mint. Kate led a reluctant Quinn to the stable. As she looked behind her to the field, Saffron was galloping along the fence line, letting out high-pitched whinnies of despair. Flute and Jambo, Sweetbriar's baby horses, were in the field behind Saffron, and they got worked up, cantering and bucking excitedly along the fence line. Alex went to the field and gave them hay to calm them down while Kate got Quinn ready to ride. When Quinn was tacked up, Kate tried to lead him to the arena, but instead of turning right, he wanted to go left, back to the field. Alex tapped him with the lunging whip, and finally they got the reluctant pony to the arena. When Alex and Kate told their mum what had happened, she laughed and said, I'm sure they'll settle down. No such luck. Quinn refused to go into any part of the arena that was not on the left, the side closest to Saffron. It was hard work for Kate riding him. Alex suggested bringing Saffron to the edge of the arena to pacify Quinn, and since it had only been a few days since the pony arrived, their mum reluctantly agreed. This worked like a charm, and Quinn's behaviour became impeccable. He did everything Kate asked, and she was impressed with how balanced he was, going effortlessly from canter to walk and walk to canter. Kate hadn't ridden, ridden a quarter horse before. When Kate rode Saffron, the same thing happened. He didn't want to go into the one side of the arena, so Alex brought Quinn to the gate and held him there. After that, Saffron was willing. Kate couldn't help finding it funny and cute that the ponies were such good friends, but it was also impractical, and it just wasn't possible to keep them together all the time. Mum suggested separating the ponies little by little and putting the younger Saffron in the field with Maggie. That way the ponies could see each other without actually being together. The motherly Maggie would keep an eye on Saffron. Later that day, Kate practised her dressage test with her mum, and it wasn't the best. Mum called out the, di the test directions and the changes in movement came up quickly. Kate was doing the movement late in every part of the test. When halting for the entry to salute the judge, Odette wouldn't stay still and became jumpy. During one attempt, Odette even reared up, standing vertically on her back and pausing in mid-air. She reared so high, Kate was frightened and she would tip over backwards. 
The goal of the test was to be in harmony with the horse, and instead of this, Kate produced a choppy test that just felt awful, with a non-existent halt at the entry and finish. Mum attempted to console her afterwards whilst Kate was taking off Odette's tack. "'When Odette reared, she was most likely trying to tell you something,' Mum said as she leaned on the fence of the stall. "'Horses can be like children. They require loads of patience, love and training. But mark my words, in time they will give you their trust and respect, and you will always learn something new.' Kate paused in thought and replied carefully, "'I guess she is sick of this dressage as well.' Mum laughed and said, "'Maybe.' Anyway, Kate, don't be so hard on yourself. Give Odette some variety with going in the forest and jumping, and I'm sure she'll be brilliant. Most importantly, remember to have fun. Kate wanted to believe her, but she felt anxious about it still. During the week, Kate went to the library with Tabby and Violet after school to study. Violet was a maths ace and helped them through some of the harder practice questions. They went to the Cream Cakes Cafe afterwards for iced chocolate and scones. Tabby couldn't resist ordering a red velvet cupcake and somehow managed to eat three scones as well. They had been to the cafe quite a few times before and knew the owner, George. He was an older man with greying hair that revealed a bald patch when he leant forward to make drinks. George was chatty. He called them the Cream Cakes Trio. When they arrived, which was cheesy, but made them laugh. He mentioned random things like an antique car show taking place somewhere in England and enjoyed debating possible weather scenarios for the day. He was nice and offered the girls an extra scoop of ice cream in their iced chocolates since it was a hot day. Once they were seated, they talked about the usual subject, horses. I'm worried about the dressage test. Odette has never reared, so it was pretty scary. She went right up, standing vertically on her back legs, Kate revealed. The girls sympathised, shaking their heads. It's probably because you've been practising the dressage test so much and Odette is getting tired of it, said Tabby knowledgeably. Kate thought for a few seconds before replying, "'That makes sense. I guess I need to practice the test less,' sighed Kate. Kate suddenly felt guilty that she'd put so much pressure on the mare. "'Don't worry, Kate. Dressage is so not easy. Have a little break and you'll be fine, I'm certain of it,' said Tabby encouragingly. "'Maybe you do some showing classes again, but in this county,' suggested Violet. "'I thought about that.' admitted Kate, but with starting at a new school and pony club and helping get sweetbriars ready, I just haven't had the time. I guess I will go again next year and until then focus on dressage, Kate said laughing. How is Spot? Tabby asked Violet. Oh, he is so much fun. Since I started carrying a crop, he isn't lazy at all and I hardly even use it now. I can't wait to start jumping lessons on him. How about Bliss? asked Violet. He is such a sweet horse, and so different from Nancy. He is so talented, gushed Tabby. The only hard part for me now is not having enough time. Riding two horses, working at the saddlery, and at Sweetbriars is exhausting. Then I'm riding my bike all over Dalesea as my mum is always busy, moaned Tabby. Kate had thought Tabby's life was perfect as she had so many friends and was such a good rider, but realised how hard it must be to fit all this in and wondered how she managed it. Before they left the cafe, Kate casually asked Tabby about Genevieve at Pony Club. "'Oh, I wouldn't spend much time thinking about her,' laughed Tabby. "'When she began at our Pony Club, she used to look down on me as I loaned Nancy and didn't have my own posh horse.' "'How outrageous!' cried Violet. "'Yes,' sighed Tabby. "'But then I realised she has a horse like a Ferrari and can't ride it. "'But her horse is, be- her horse is beautiful but grumpy,' said Kate." Yes, it's such a pity, agreed Tabby. She also doesn't have many friends beside Jilly, who's like her puppy dog. If you ignore her, she leaves you alone, and then after a while she'll probably try and be friends with you. That's what happened with me, but I don't want a friend who's mean and arrogant, so I kept her at arm's length. And that is all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed chapter 9. I'm really looking forward to chapter 10. But until we get on with that, don't forget to give this video ow a big thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel and hit that notification bell so you know when i'm uploading new videos all the time and don't forget to com- post any questions comments or reviews on my social medias at lana clark question on instagram facebook or ace underscore question on twitter or you can leave it in the comments below and until next time guys it's goodbye